This is my ATI M1911 military. It's a replica of a GI Colt 1911A1. Um, I have put new G10 grips on it, a Wilson Combat Beaver Tail, a Wilson Combat Commander style hammer, a Wilson Combat Sear, which you can't see that's inside the gun. Those are all recent upgrades that I did myself. I bought some uh, tools and, and some ceramic uh, polishing sticks to do the inside trigger job for the sear. I did not put a new disconnector in it. I used my old disconnector. Um, I, but I did, here's the old original hammer. Here's the old original grip safety. Here's the old original wooden grips. Now, I always wanted to kind of toy with a 1911 and get into a little bit of the fitting and stuff and so I started doing that with the one that I have since I really have never done it before and I like working on guns I decided to just start with the one I have I've kept everything that was original so that if I want to I can put everything back I did not get an extended safety because I kinda like the one that's here already um, I didn't want an ambidextrous one, and this one works perfect for me the way it is. If I change my mind in the future, I'll buy one of these and fit that as well. But I'm going to get into this a little bit just to show how I fit this grip safety and probably make a video on just when I re -blue this. But let me take the gun apart off camera and then show you what I've got. Okay, I have field stripped the pistol and taken the grips off. Now I'm going to go through the process of taking the rest of the internals apart on camera while I film. The next thing we're going to want to do is push this mainspring housing pin out. And before I do that, I'm going to uncock this so that this spring that's in here is not under pressure. So, you want to make sure you hang on to this hammer and not let it slam forward and hit the frame. Because it can damage the hammer and it can ding up the frame. So hold on to it and take the pressure off by holding it when you release. So the first thing I'm going to do... I have this little homemade block I use sometimes. Sometimes I just push it out or tap it out. You're going to get a punch the right size. Preferably brass, but right now I can't find my brass punch because I'm filming and things always go sideways when I'm filming. But the point is, get a punch, tap the pin out. Okay, you can see that. It'll push out the rest of the way. Okay. Save your pin. I'm actually going to take my little parts tray and put my parts in there for now. This should slide down. You have to pull on it. It's a little bit oily. There we go. Okay. So now the mainspring housing is out. We're not going to take that apart. To take the hammer out <clears throat> and the grip safety, we're going to have to slide that back. Now it's not under pressure anymore. And then to get this safety out, you're going to jiggle this with the hammer back and kind of work it back and forth and pull it out. But when you do that, this plunger assembly, which is two little metal tubes with a spring in the middle, in the middle of this plunger tube, they're going to want to fly out. So you got to keep an eye on that. Now you'll see as I finagle this piece, and you can push from this side as well, all of a sudden this thing is going to want to pop out. Okay, so this piece pops out. Here's my plunger assembly that fell out when I was in the middle of that. I'll put that back together. Set that aside. 
and here's my grip safety and my mainspring. Okay. Now to get the get the hammer out on this side, you'll see the little hammer pin right there. Just give it a push. Okay. And they should be able to pull it out from this side. Like that. And then your hammer assembly will come out. Alright. Now the last thing down in here is where your disconnector and your sear go through. And this pin right here comes through here and it holds all of that together so that it can move and float up and down a little bit and if you look when I move the trigger you can see the disconnector moving back and forth the sears allowed to move up and down in there okay so carefully you want to push the pin out from the right side and if it's been taken out a few times it should probably basically fall right out so there you go now this part these pieces are free to fall right out now. What I like to do is cup my hand over the back of the frame and turn it over like that to take them out. Now, I'm not going to take the I'm not going to take the trigger out, but if I was, I would push in on the magazine release and I would turn this screw head a quarter of a turn or so until the little tab that's inside here that's attached to that screw is going to come back like this out of the frame and then when you let go of it the whole assembly is free to come out but I'm not going to do that because I have no reason to take this spring out all I wanted to show you was how to get the sear and disconnector out okay this is my new sear that I just got and on the very very tip you can barely see a little silver line a little shiny line right there that's all I polished that little polish of that shiny silver line right there that's it the sear angles were already cut I've never done a trigger before or any sear work on a 1911 so I was very careful I took three I think two or three soft rubs on this sear with a 900 grit ceramic stone just and I was looking at it through a magnifying glass just to rub a little bit of the black material that was there on that angle because if you look close and you're not gonna be able to see it on here but when you look close under magnification there's an angle cut on the back side and an angle cut on the front side one is at 60 degrees one is at 40 degrees and then this the holes line up and inside there this floats up and down and goes back and forth interacting with these hooks on the hammer when it's cocked all the way they sit about like that and then when you pull the trigger this moves out of the way and the hammer falls forward until it hits um, when it's at the half cock, it sits in that position right there. When it's fully cocked, it sits under here. When you pull the trigger, this moves out of the way, and this whole thing slides forward, and the hammer hits the firing pin. So I installed this new hammer. I used, reused my old hammer strut. You have to carefully push the pin out. You don't want to bang on the parts because they're brittle and they can break. So this is all finesse work. If you're not comfortable with it I suggest you don't do it okay but you can just see that nice shiny silver line right there I created that by slowly and carefully just at the right angle rubbing it on a 900 grit ceramic stone with a little oil then I wiped it off and looked at it again under magnification then I took a 1200 grit or 1500 grit I'd have to go look stone and just lightly polished it on there I took the actual sear and just slowly rubbed it again with a little oil two or three rubs till it was nice and shiny like it is right now okay and then that's it I put it back in and it felt crisp it has a nice break 
and I know it's safe. I haven't overdone it. I haven't gone nuts on it. It is going to wear in even more over time as I shoot it more. The other thing is this grip safety you can see on the edges here I had to file all of this off. I already tested this area right here on both sides in the back I also had to um, file a little bit off and on the bottom on the corners all these spots where it's silver I had to file it with a file to get it to fit in the frame correctly now the last part of the fitting actually believe it or not was this bottom portion and specifically these two tabs on the bottom because not just to get it in the frame this way okay not just to get it in the frame so it would fit but when the mainspring housing is pushed up into the frame where it goes up here this notch right there interacts with these two pieces that are on the bottom of the grip safety they fit into these slots right here okay and then it rides in here and you have to fit this slowly and carefully so that when this piece, which blocks the trigger bow, this is how the grip safety works, when it sits in here, when it's off, the lever is down, directly in line with the trigger bow. See that notch right there, that, that area? This slides in there and it's basically relatively straight. It kind of floats in there. Okay? But you've got to fit it and angle it correctly by looking in through the frame here and looking back in this way through the frame to see where this lines up and and watch that th the trigger actually hits it and to get the angle correct you've got to fit this and file it so that this lever sits straight and pushes up against the edge of the bow. You've also got to fit it and file it correctly so that when you push this in, that little nub right there pops up and out of the way of the trigger bow. So it sits very, very shallow, very, very close. And when you don't have this in there, it's not pushing on the bottom of it. You get a false sense that this is, this is going to work. It's going to draw, uh, block the trigger bow from going, from moving. But that's not the case. Because once you tighten everything up and put it back together, when this slot pushes up against this, watch this. Okay, I know I don't have it pinned or anything, but just watch. See that? It moves. I'll do it again. Okay, here it is out. When you push this in, watch the bottom here, it slides into place. Okay, that's what it does. It interlocks it's, and it rides in that little channel right there. If you don't take enough material off of these little tabs on the bottom, every time you slide this up, this pushes in slightly and then it's, it allows the trigger bow to move and it does not block the trigger. So you've got to fit this correctly for the safety to work. Now that took a little bit of work and, and a lot of time. But again, I went slow and I was very careful with it. So what I need to do next, and I'm going to make a separate video, is I need to polish all this. I'm going to sand out some of my scratches and polish it with some probably 1000 grit sandpaper and I also have a little polishing wheel I'm just going to try and get the edges real nice and then clean it with alcohol and then re-blue it and I'm going to blue just the parts that are silver right now because they're raw from being filed and, and sandpapered a little bit but that's how you do it that's how you that's how you fit this grip safety I mean that's the quick and dirty way I can tell you how to do it so now so I don't take forever because I tend to do that. I'm going to show you how I put this thing back together. Now you'll notice the, the sear and disconnector are still 
connected the way they were when they came out and they have the correct relationship here. Now this can be a little tricky. Sometimes it'll fall out on you. And I know there's a ton of oil in there, okay? I, I, I sort of did that on purpose <laughs> the last time I took it apart and cleaned it. Now I don't know how good the camera caught it, but I basically just dropped it in there as a unit and it slid in. And you'll see the top of the disconnector comes out the top right here. Now I'm going to try to put my pin through without too much trouble. I can see the holes are not lined up. I see one set of holes is lined up. Now you can move the trigger slightly and that will help move things a little bit and then kind of get the, get it started and you can actually go in the back with your finger move things around to line them up a little bit and then if all goes well the nub pops out the other side yep and this is floating again just like it was so that's perfect that's what I want I want it to be back in there cool now what happens is the sear right now is kind of offset and it's going to be sort of in the way when I go to put the hammer back in so you got to watch for that too you may have to kind of move the hammer around and finagle it a little bit to get it to fit because it doesn't like to go back the way the sear is connected sometimes so we line this up and again it's just the pin sorry about that tight quarters in here and hard for me to keep everything in view all right so same thing you want to line the holes up kind of jiggle the pin if you have to you can move this stuff around once it's lined up push it you'll see it pop through the other side okay now what you're going to watch for here is this hammer strut as you go forward you need to make sure that that's not getting stuck inside the groove here in a funky way and you also want to make sure the tip of it goes down inside the spring hole here for the plunger. Now, if you look at your mainspring, there's a tiny little notch bent into it that goes in this, sorry guys again, goes into that slot. Now, the way this is designed, the left leg rides over here on the bottom of the disconnector, and that tab right there sits off onto the edge of the trigger bow. The middle leg rides in the middle right here to put pressure on the disconnector so that it always wants to go back up. Okay, and then this third leg is what's going to push on the side of this grip safety and give it a little spring so that it springs back and forth. So we're going to drop that into place and get a good look at it because what happens is as you move things around this will sort of pop out of position sometimes and so you want to look and make sure those are lined up exactly the way they are right now so that the left leg pushes on the back of the sear and the one little knob comes off and then this is sort of pushing on the back and then the middle piece is on the disconnector behind the trigger bow and then this one's bent out for the grip safety now what I do, the way I do it, I kind of hold it down with my thumb like I just did. And forgive me if I'm not doing a good explanation, but I'm trying to think and talk at the same time and just assemble it the way I normally do. I take this and I start it on not even halfway, but well, about halfway, let's say, till there's a little tension on it, okay, to kind of hold this in place. Because if you don't, this guy can pop out, and come out of the slot, these things get off kilter, and then you're pretty hosed, actually. So I'm going to take my strut and I'm going to try and line it up with this hole. And again, I'm not going to go all the way in yet because i got to put this in. And you want to try and slide it in. There we go. Now, this is where you got to get a balance of letting this strut float a little bit and still hold this in position and then line that strut up so it gets down in the hole kind of like that 
All right, now we're gonna take our grip safety, okay? Take our grip safety, and we're gonna start it in the hole here, and then cock the hammer. But before I do that, the most important thing that I just forgot was I need to slide this all the way up and line this hole up and put the pin back in. Almost forgot that, guys. That's why I always get goofed up when the camera's on. Okay, so we take our pin, and you want the side that's round, it's sticking out, to come out the other side, just like the other pins. Hopefully, let me move this up a little bit. You can see this. Okay, I'm actually gonna start it just with the rubber mallet. And there we go. It's almost all the way in. I'm gonna push it flush. That way I'm not dinging it all up. And you'll see it come out the other side. We're good. So the mainspring housing is in. Now, once the mainspring housing is in, we're gonna start this pin in the hole. And we need to get our plunger assembly. Once you have this kind of in the hole, holding this in position, then you can cock your hammer. Okay? And this guy's just kind of sitting there floppy because we need to put our plunger assembly in. I'll show you a little trick I use for the plunger assembly. Now, there's people that will use a little plastic tool or they will use some. A little piece of wood some other things I've used a toothpick but they usually break to to hold the end of the plunger assembly out of the way when you go to put this back okay so when you put the plunger assembly in you want the little tiny end to come out you want this the tiny end to come out this side. Okay, there's a short end and a long end. The long end goes to the grip safety. Slide it in and don't push it hard because you don't want to send it back towards you. So once your plunger assembly is in, now you put this pin in. And if you look inside here, you'll see where the relationship is between the parts, between the sear, the hammer, and the safety that little knob sits right in there and the shelf on one side of it is what pushes against the sear to make it impossible to fire if you replace that that's that little spot is what needs to be filed on now with the top of the frame out of the way you can actually push this up too far you can push this up farther than it goes when the frame is uh, when the slide is put on the frame you don't want to do that. You only want to get it part way. You don't want to go way up. You want to go part way to try and engage the surface where this little plunger is supposed to push against it. And it can be a pain in the neck. One of the things I do is I'll take a tooth uh, a toothpick or a Q-tip or something like that. Let me get some of this fuzz off of here. And I'll rub it in there and sort of push it to hold my plunger tube. like that and then once you hear the little click get that thing out of there <laughs> and there it is okay it's in position and the way you know it's in position it's not only when it pops out the other side but when it's flush okay and you can click it on and off if it goes down and clicks into this detent right here clicks into that detent you're good okay and again, you don't want to pull the trigger and have the hammer fall and smash it into the frame. So, this is back together the way it was when we first took it apart. I'm going to put the rest of it back together off camera. The only thing that I haven't shown you guys how to do is put the grips on and off. Okay, My other video has the field strip, and if you need to know how to do that, uh, disassembly and assembly, you can watch that video. 
I hope this is helpful to somebody. If you've got any questions or comments or you just want to know what I did and how I did it, send me a comment, send me a message, and I will definitely get back to you if I get a notification. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.